It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about which Canon mirrorless camera is the best for you. Is it the Canon EOS R in 2021? Is it the R5, R6, RP? What is it gonna be? All right, let's get into it. But first, you're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one else has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, let's dive in. So to reiterate, today we're gonna to be talking about which Canon mirrorless camera you should buy in 2021. Now the Canon EOS R, uh, I've been on a two year journey with it. Next month marks the two year mark since I first purchased the EOS R. And uh, I've been doing everything in those past two years, learning a ton, off camera lighting, uh, landscape, car photography, food photography, product photography, um, portraits of course, which is something that I'm, I'm into. And uh, a year ago, I bought a second Canon EOS R to create YouTube content. And so that's also um, a big part of the journey too, is photography and videography with this camera. Now, it's 2021, would I buy it again? So I honestly think it is uh, because it's the first of the year or it's about the time uh, of the year that I bought the, uh, the Canon EOS R the first time and then the second time. But I started to reflect again on this journey and the landscape has changed since the R came out. There's the RP, there's the EOS R5 and R6 that came out last summer. And so I wanna ask myself and for you, maybe this is helpful for you and I don't have all the answers, I'm figuring it out, but I just wanna ask myself, what is the Canon mirrorless camera you should buy, I should buy in 2021? Now we're up to different things, we photograph different uh, subjects, but I know that I have a formula and that's use, performance, and price. And those are kind of the three things I use to kind of guide me as I make sense of a camera purchase, whether it be a lens or a camera body. All right, now while I've owned the EOS R uh, the last two years, I have rented the R5, I have rented the R6, and granted I didn't have a ton of time with those cameras, but I did use them and I have a catalog of images from them in Lightroom. And so I really wanna take a look and kind of dive in. I'll share some sample images and um, reflect on what is the best camera. R5, R6, EOS R, even the RP as well. So I frequently talk about use, performance, and price when talking about a camera lens like this RF 15 to 35 or this camera body like the EOS R. These are the things you have to think about and let's break it down very, very clearly. Breaking it down and building you up, that's my motto in 2021. What are you gonna use the camera for? Literally, there's no other question that matters. If you're not gonna use it and you're just buying put it on your shelf, it could be any camera. So what are you gonna use it for? And the next thing is, how does it perform at that given task or for that purpose? And the last thing you should consider, the last detail, it's a mere detail, is what does it cost? And a lot of people start with the price and they say, well, if you have this much to spend, this is what you look at. And I say, no, 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 that's wrong. You shouldn't do it that way. Price is concrete. It's, it's a detail, it's a fact, it's something you can just look up. There is no opinion about the price. Yeah, you can get something used, but the price has no type of analysis surrounding it. And so there's very little thinking to do around that. And plus there's financing options, there's ways you can save up money, there's ways you can drum up extra work with the gear you invest in. There's a whole different uh, set of ways you can pay for something. So never let price stand in your way and don't consider it first. Do not consider it first. I'm talking to myself because I often do that too. I say, oh, I can't afford that, whatever it is. And so I limit myself. So I'm not gonna limit myself. I don't want you to limit yourself either. So we're talking about price last. Then the next thing to consider uh, for a second is performance. And this brings us to our favorite subject. It's specs. It's what can the camera do? Megapixels, frames per second, all those things. Now here's the question I want you to ask. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, I had a great day of shooting 45 megapixels. People don't say that. People don't talk about the specs when it's in their day-to-day -day work with cameras because we're storytellers. We're d people document. We're people who uh, were journalists and uh, we create art and art is not about specs. And so performance is actually not the thing you should look at uh, first either. Uh, no one says, oh, I had a great day of shooting 20 frames per second. Awesome. Yeah, sometimes those details matter, but we would say, well, what? <laughs> What were you shooting? Was it sports? Was it a dancer? Was it um, somebody cooking? 
those matter. Those details matter because that's the story we're trying to tell. So this brings us to the question of use. And honestly, this can be a tricky question, particularly if you're a hobbyist or a semi-professional photographer. Because a professional photographer will say, look, here are the tools of the trade, here's the trade I engage in, and it's very clear what I'm using my camera for. But a hobbyist, um, somebody who's semi-pro, I consider myself a semi-professional photographer. I make money using my camera. And um, so it may be kind of tricky to think about that question because we might be out in a field doing some landscape photography and you might be thinking, what am I using my camera for? Who are gonna see these shots? Who's my audience and what is the purpose of this? And you might even have a little bit of what's uh, called imposter syndrome. Like you feel like, a fake, a fraud, and who am I to buy an expensive camera and what am I going to use it for really? The question of use honestly is the most important question because that's where you merge with the camera and you come together to create something new, something that no one else in the world can create. And uh, a way to think about this is no one knows the people you know in the communities you're a part of and can tell those stories with the exact same perspective as you. And so what are you going to use your camera for is the essential question you should start with when you're looking at a piece of gear. What are you going to use it for? Who can you impact? Whose lives do you touch? Who can you document? What art can you create with a camera like this? So let's start there. What do I want to use my camera for? What's my use? It's for portraits and for uh, product photography and on my Instagram I changed my bio recently to say dramatic portraits and uh, product photography and that's really my goal that's what I'm focusing on and so that provides a lot of clarity around what camera matters to me with portraits and product photography can the EOS R do that we know that it can can the R5 do that we know that it can I have sample images in my Lightroom uh, and I can look through those and sh see that it holds up to that task. Can the R6 do that? Yes, we know that it can. I have sample images in my Lightroom catalog that show me it can do that job. All these cameras, I've had them in my hands. I know how it feels in my hands. I know that it can do the job. So there's another step right after that. Let's figure out, do I want to use the camera for video? Is video a part of what this camera is going to do for me? That's an important question. So initially I thought that the R5 or R6 would be my solution for creating video content. But since then I've discovered the Fuji X-T4 and that's it for me. That's it for me. That's my YouTube go-to, my, uh, my camera for creating video content for clients. And that's the solution I love. So I'm sold on that. I actually don't need a Canon camera to give me video. I, I don't need that. So that's extraneous and we're not looking at that matter uh, for this decision. Yeah, and the Fuji, I love the color, the ease of use. I love the, the footage it produces, and so I'm sold. I love you, Fuji. I love you, Fuji. So here's the thing, I'm not gonna buy the Canon camera for video, so what about C-Log? Now here you go again, throwing specs into this discussion of what you're gonna use it for. I love C-Log. C-Log's easy to grade, it's a dream, but I have a video solution, and so don't throw specs into the question when that's actually not about what you're gonna use the camera for. Keep your head focused, keep your head clear, and let's get this done. Let's make this decision. I'm ready to decide already. Are you ready? Right. All right, so now let's turn to specs, finally, because we know what we're gonna use the camera for. And you can forget about video specs, because this discussion is about product photography and portrait photography. When it comes to the type of art that I wanna create with my camera, I wanna make sure that I have resolution big enough to print like in a magazine ad or fam family portraits that get printed out in a, an album or something like that. Right after image quality and resolution are two other important factors. And one is that I'm nailing focus every time when I need it, the camera's reliable. And two, can I shoot fast enough when nailing focused? And so we're gonna talk about those two things. All right, so the question is, does the R uh, nail focus and can I shoot quickly enough with it? So yeah, the R does nail focus. I have used it time and time again weddings in situations where you're not going to get that shot again and it has never let me down. So speed, speed of uh, shots and how quick and responsive it is. I can say after using the X-T4 for photography that when I switch back to the EOS R it is a little bit 
uh, of a drag. Like it, it doesn't shoot as quick as I would like. And so um, we have eight frames per second, uh, but there are other options out there. And so are there portrait shoots uh, or product photography shots that I would want that would require more than that? So yeah, so I have a, uh, like a quinceanera sweet uh, 16 uh, photo shoot. The client is on roller skates and she's coming through the frame and I wanna be in servo mode and pop, 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 get several shots in crisp focus. Now the R got me through the gig and it, I got great shots, but not every frame was crisp. I got one and I had have to say, hey, come make another pass, do another pass. I don't wanna do that with clients. I wanna nail so many frames in that uh, moment that I can say I got what I need. I have plenty to move, uh, plenty to work with, and, and let's move on. Uh, there might be shots where you're doing uh, pouring something or a liquid is splashing and you want to get multiple bursts uh, so the, you have frames to pick from because you have those chaotic elements in the frame and you're never going to be able to plan that exactly, so you want multiple frames. Um, so I would say I do want a camera that's, that's faster than, than the R. So with the, the R5 and the R6, you get 12 mechanical shots per second. That's like click, 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 and you can sync it with a flash. Um, and silent shutter, you have up to 20, and that means you can't use the flash with silent shutter, uh, but you can get more, um, more shots off in a second. So those are very good stats, highly, highly respectable, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. So something to remember, uh, here's a quote from Canon. I'm gonna read it so I get it right. During servo autofocus, depending on subject conditions or lens use, continuous shooting speed may be lower. So if you're trying to track something like I was mentioning the skater, you're not gonna get that uh, 12 mechanical frames per second because servo's operating and it's, it's gonna make sure it's in focus before it fires. So obviously that's gonna be a deterrent as well. Now, another thing is it also says on the Canon website, uh, it matters what the temperature is and how much your battery is charged and what lens you're using. So all these things come into play and there's no guarantee you're gonna get that many frames per second. But the truth is the R5 and R6 outperform the EOS R. So that's one area that I'm, I'm interested in, in upgrading. Now I haven't talked about stabilization, which is on the R5 and the R6, but not on the R. Um, and I'm not sure stabilization is a deal breaker for me. However, I mean, I think it's more related to video, but it does allow you to slow your shutter speed down. And so you can get better handheld shots at slower speeds. Um, mostly with portraits and, and product photography, you have time, you have space, you have lighting, you can have all these controls um, over what you're doing. And so I don't know if stabilization is a deal breaker, but it is better for those, those shots with movement in it, or you're trying to capture something in motion. And uh, so it does help you improve your performance. Not a deal breaker for me, but it is an important spec to pay attention to. I'm in a parking garage, a place I love to film in Santa Ana, and it overlooks the city and it's got some cool urban elements to it. But I realize these tension wires are going slanted and I'm standing on a different level and I thought it'd be cool, but it's really just confusing. And sometimes talking about all this detail about what you want out of a camera and what you're gonna use it for in the specs, it gets confusing and the waters get muddy. And so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna let this frame represent how confusing and sometimes our vision gets skewed, right? And we end up choosing things for the wrong reason. Not to put too much uh, onto this discussion, but at some point resolution does come into play. And the, the R6 has a 20 megapixel sensor and the R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor and the, the R is right in the middle with uh, 30. So what does it all mean? So. One way to look at it is the R6 has lower megapixels, which means that the pixels are bigger on that size of the sensor because the sensors are all the same size. The bigger the pixels are, the more they absorb light, the better the low light performance, which makes more of a difference in the R6 for video because again, when you are shooting product photography and portraits, you can largely introduce light pretty easily with strobes you can have a tripod and open up that shutter and let more light in. Whereas when you're doing video, you really have to rely on constant lighting or, um, or your camera's low light capa capability. And so it's much more difficult, much more challenging to use constant lighting to light up a scene 
uh, versus using some strobes, which are very easily, you know, portable, they're battery powered and everything like that. So the R6 is geared more for uh, better performance, low light and video. It's more of a video camera. That's the way I think of it. And of course the 45 megapixels from the R5, impressive resolution, right? You may not have that low light performance, but maybe you don't need it because of the reasons I mentioned, Bre the possibility of bringing in uh, lights and strobes uh, to your shoots. Then you have the R right in the middle with 30. It's kind of a sweet spot. It's a really great camera, great resolution. And I'd say if I was gonna step forward, I would probably go on the higher megapixel side because I have the X-T4 for video. That's sorted out. I would probably err on the side of more pixels and more resolution for this camera, for portraits, and for dramatic product photography. Something to think about. All right, so it, it does get down to some pixel pinching, and believe me, I like to pixel pinch, pixel peep, whatever you call it, and the R5 is truly amazing. The amount of detail in those shots, the amount you can zoom in, really see the sharpness. The R, the R6, the R5, they have amazing autofocus. Nail it every time, I would say, but the R5 has that amazing resolution. And so um, it really outperforms the others and there's no, no way to uh, spin that. It's just, it's just true. It's an amazing, amazing camera. And so it's my choice in that term, in, in, in that scope of performance. What I'm gonna use it for, portraits and product photography in terms of performance, it outperforms everything else out there. Um, and I have samples to prove it. And then it comes down to price. It comes down to price. And so um, I think you have to ask yourself this question. I'll go back to, oh, there's, there's one other thing I, I heard in the, the Fuji Global Summit uh, last week, and I thought it was cool about the amount of pixels and resolution that the GFX 100S had. And uh, the, the quote was something like this. It's, it's like, your eye can't see the amount of detail, but your mind perceives it. And your mind just knows the quality is there, senses it. It's not a matter of like being able to break it down concretely, but you're, you're just able to, to feel it. And, and actually, when I open up the Lightroom catalog, there's this one image where at a park in Ojai, um, kind of a nature conservatory, and just the way the green leaves just almost crackle in the frame, it's amazing. Um, and it's, it's the camera. It's the amount of detail that's, that, that it renders there for you. Um, okay, so that, that comes down to price, and so we really have to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about it's not about your budget or your wallet. It's really about go back to what are you going to use it for? What are you going to use your camera for? Whose stories are you going to tell? And what are they worth to you? Something to think about. I've talked myself into the R5, and now I have to think, are the stories I'm telling, the people I'm serving, the communities I'm connected to, is that the camera that will do the best job for them? So, something to think about. Anyways, so there's all these things spinning into the mix, and the thing is, I don't have the one right answer. I don't have the one right answer. I'm figuring it out, and hopefully this was a helpful discussion for you as you think through what your uh, goals are with photography. And let's go on the journey together. Thank you for joining me. I hope this has been interesting to you. I hope it helps you reflect on why we buy cameras, why we love gear so much, and what are we uh, getting into when we're getting into these relationships. And so um, hit subscribe, hit that like button, and leave me a comment and let me know the camera that's gonna make the difference for you in 2021. All right, see you in the next video. Um, this is downtown Santa Ana. It's kind of cool over here. There's a great old building I love right over here. I love this great old building. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love that. I love filming up here. So you can see, whoop. This is some place I come in a park and I do uh, street photography. Now it's time to go home and edit this video, yo. <laughs> All right, peace. Oh yeah, Saddleback Mountain right back there. Right there, Saddleback Mountain. Cool. It has snow on it. That's crazy.